Greetings, YouTube. It's been a few months now. Actually, maybe closer to half a year now. This goes by so fast when you make content every day on YouTube, where I made a video about which six stars I would recommend taking to rank two. And then I really didn't think about it much, but suddenly after July 4th, the resources, particularly for those of you who are uncollected and or cavalier, have become far more accessible for tier five basics. Personally, I had an overflow of tier five basic catalyst briefly for the first time in my life. And because of that, it's kind of tempting now to take a six star to rank two if you have those resources in ways that you just didn't think about before. Now keep in mind, that's still a huge tall task, right? That's three fully formed tier five basic catalysts. That is, as crazy as it is, to say 135,000 tier five basic catalyst fragments to take a six star to rank two, not counting any of the other resources, including so many tier two alpha catalysts. But also keep in mind, Kabam has made it known that it's going to be very difficult to take a six star to rank three anytime soon. And so because of this, the uh, haters out there who always love to comment, Five stars are the new four stars. Uh, no, that's not true at all. And even if you take that six star to rank three in, I don't know, 2024, there still are going to be uh, champions at SIG 200 as a five star that outperform that rank three six star. So the uh, demise of the five star was premature for sure. And so I'm going to kind of go through line by line and talk about what champs, if you have them awakened at high sig, which most people will not, because unless you spend an insane amount of money, there have been very few opportunities at the current time of recording this video to get six star sig stones. In fact, we've only seen that twice. And so you might have a awakened six star at like sig 20 or sig 30, but that's probably not going to do nearly as good as your five star who has at sig 150 and above. So keep that in mind as well. And then, of course, if the champion does not need to be awakened, that heavily factors into taking them to rank two straight out of the box. In that top line, from Storm to Captain America, World War II, you will notice that a lot of the champs are trash. Deadpool X-Force. I've got him. Never taken that guy to rank two. Iron Fist, underrated champ, would never advise to rank two. Rocket Raccoon, Yellow Jacket, even Winter Soldier with the Killmonger Synergy would not get my best no-brainer rank up. Storm Awakened has great potential, but not rank two worthy compared to others. And then Captain America uh, World War II is the same. I will give an honorable mention. I know one guy in the community who is brave enough to rank two his Awakened, I think he was Sig 60, OG Daredevil. And great stuns. And also, of course, you use OG Daredevil to dodge projectiles. And it's just really cool to see a Daredevil with a PI of around 12,000 since we did not see an OG Daredevil as a 5-star. And the best you could see was around 6,000 PI, maybe but probably closer to 5,000 as a 4-star uh, for years. But honorable mention, not exactly a no-brainer. The top line, even with Gamora's buff, has no one that I would say take to rank 2. Now, the second line has a couple of fascinating candidates, particularly Luke Cage, who is becoming even more valuable in the game, especially if you're fighting Map 5 in Alliance Quest because he is a hype killer, that mini-boss that's oh so annoying. Nebula, I have seen a couple of rank 2 options out there, and she does great work. And then Yondu, right? Of all people, Yondu, still a pesky defender, and very underrated for offense, particularly that special one. Out of all those champs, I think Luke Cage, especially Awakened, because I don't really think he needs to be super high sig from everything I've seen, uh, he would be my top choice, but he's still just a honorable mention. He is not somebody that's a no-brainer, and so I would hold off and just enjoy playing with your six-star Luke Cage at the max level of rank one. Now the next line, Red Hulk is also a champion that just like Luke Cage and Nebula and Yondu can do some serious damage, unawakened even, as a six star. Taken to rank two though, probably not. Angela was arguably the best six star of the original six star basic pool, wouldn't take her to rank two. 
Killmonger is a certainly honorable mention choice. I don't know anyone that has sent me, at least, and it didn't, that of course doesn't mean he doesn't exist, ranked to six-star Killmonger video, but still a pesky defender and a underrated attacker, particularly with certain synergies like Void. Speaking of Void, let's go to the next line. If you're Katie Candy, you are lucky enough to have an awakened six-star Void. But she has told me that she is holding up from taking him to rank two because doesn't have a high SIG. And Void really needs to be at as high a SIG as possible. So that 565 SIG 200 five-star Void is going to do much more damage over the long haul than that six-star rank two Void with SIG 20 or 30. So Void, I'd hold off until a high SIG, which probably means, I don't know, maybe a year or two. Gladiator Hulk, I have seen interesting video along with Sentinel at rank two. I think they are low-end rank-up choices, but not compared to the no-brainers we're going to talk about in this video. From there, Hawkeye, no. Thor Ragnarok, no. Guillotine, no. Morningstar is kind of where I've put Luke Cage and Red Hulk and Nebula and even Killmonger. I think I have seen some certain value, particularly if you're amazing with her in Alliance War and, and being awakened, of course, helps. But I'm not going to put her in the same category as I would some of the other champs we're going to name. I want to give an honorable mention shout out. There is somebody that has sent me amazing video of a rank two, six star, unawakened Hella. The damage is awesome. And uh, synergies, of course, help with Hella as well. So I would put her below some of the options I just named, particularly Awakened Void, Gladiator Hulk, even Sentinel and Morningstar. But Hella can be an effective six star if you love fighting with her. Sabretooth is another great candidate for a underrated and underappreciated six star. Sabretooth is somebody that can be very versatile and also has great synergy opportunities. Proxima Midnight, I just think it takes too long for her to ramp up. I would not recommend her at rank two, but there are people out there who she's actually their favorite champ, and I get if you take her to rank two. But compare Proxima Midnight to the no doubt Corvus Glaive rank up. My six star Corvus is maybe the most fun champion I have to play particularly when, of course, you get the missions up and you don't need Corvus to be awakened to get the missions up. So Corvus is the top choice so far from what we've seen as a no-brainer for rank two as a six-star. Even if you have like a five-star rank four, still do it. Captain America Infinity War, like Void, I would only recommend if awakened at high sig. Iron Man Infinity War is also somebody who does have value but i would never at this point take him up to rank two and people will say what about for defense i would not take a six star up mostly for defense does he have some value uh especially awakened of course and there are videos out there that would uh, argue that he should go to rank two and so if you love fighting with him similar to hell or, or anybody else uh I, I totally get it but if you have the resources and you can only take say iron man infinity war or in a perfect world goes to rank two I think the argument is pretty easy. Domino is incredible at rank two. I am also lucky enough to have that champion on my roster at rank two. And I, I think she's in the top three most fun champions to play. Nightcrawler, I have Awakened as a six star. Even with the Havoc synergy, which is super fun, I would not take him to rank two ever. Electra, no. Mordo, no. We're going down the list. I have seen, and this is an honorable mention, some great six star wasp unawakened video and so kind of like uh, say iron man infinity war if you love fighting with this champion she is a bit of a glass cannon so to speak but uh if if you want to do it fine doc ock similarly even the hood heck but they're not no-brainers and at the end of the day if you're going to spend the resources i still say go with the 565 five star especially awakened at high sig ghost like corvus and domino and we're going to go down the list and maybe talk about Cole and Namor to a certain extent because I know he also does benefit from a high sig. But uh, in general, Ghost, easy, rank two choice. Now I've just got to take my own advice and uh, become a better Ghost player, let's be honest. We're going to go down now because we want to speed this video along. Venom the Duck and Emma Frost are two fantastic rank two choices that don't need to be awakened. 
Part of my goal with this video is to talk about champions that you don't want to have to wait until, again, 2024 to max out. And so just kind of to look ahead, even in the bottom row, Aegon, I would not think about taking to rank two before Sig, I don't know, 100? Compare the effectiveness to an awakened Aegon that's a 565 Sig 200. And even if you can get that uh, Aegon to rank two, I just, I think it's a waste of resources. I really do. Emma and Venom the Duck would be better on Awakened. Omega Red, incredible champion. Somebody that at the time of recording this, I am almost 0 for 70 on trying to open in the five-star basic, and yet really, really needs to be high sig, and that's even before we talk about suicide mastery builds. So if you've got a five-star Omega Red at sig 200 or a six-star Omega Red at sig 20, I think the choice is easy. Save your resources. Do not take six-star Omega Red to rank two. Symbiote Supreme, on the other hand, amazing rank two option, even unawakened. So he is on the short list of champions that I would highly recommend. By the way, again, huge shout out to MCOC Trucos. They make incredible infographics to the uh, for the community. Like them on Facebook. They are all over social media, and they make so many content creators' jobs easier, including my own, and deserve full credit for this and so many other great infographics. The Thing, believe it or not, I am now convinced, even Unawakened, is a solid rank 2 option. I have seen so much damage from people that know how to play The Thing. Havoc is also an honorable mention if you can play him right as well. No one else in that top tier I would recommend as much as those two, but certainly Night Thrasher and Darkhawk are honorable mentions. I think I'm not the most experienced with Darkhawk, but from what I've been told, Awakened and at a higher SIG benefits him, and I trust the people who have told me that. Now, looking ahead to August 13th, Captain Marvel, particularly Awakened, right, is a fantastic choice for rank two. You can't go wrong with that. Cole, Obsidian, is also a top tier right up there with... Ghost and Corvus and Domino, etc. Choice for rank two. You'll notice I was really picky with this list. Most champs I didn't discuss because they weren't worth your time listening. This means most six stars are irrelevant for rank two choices right now because the resources are so scarce. Just because you have a six star doesn't mean you should look at that champion more favorable than most of your five-star roster, particularly those that you have at high sig and rank four. Don't fall for the trap of taking a six-star to rank two just because you're thinking about the future of the game when you can take almost two five-stars to rank five and they're going to clear more content for you. I realize as the game progresses, Kabam's counter to this narrative will be six-star gates that maybe don't allow you to take any five stars in, and that will be a revisit of this video. But until they have those full gates, it still makes more sense from my perspective to take a max sig five star to rank five than a middle tier, or even upper middle tier six star to rank two. I was hoping to get this done in 15 minutes. We are under 14 minutes. That makes me very happy. So I'm going to say thanks for watching. I'm going to end this video now. And as always, thank you to MCOC Trucos for providing this fantastic infographic to use as a visual aid.